So let's just jump into the discussion of political parties. As I said, lots of stuff that I would like to talk with you about uh, under this topic, but uh, we're just going to have to narrow it down. And I want to start by uh, making a distinction or sharing a distinction with you that was initially made by the French political scientist Maurice Dubuget, um, who uh, essentially said if you look at political parties around the world today and historically, there have been two basic types of political parties. What he calls a cadre party system uh, and describes as a system that is dominated by political elites and that is concerned primarily with contesting the elections. Uh, a cadre party system restricts the influence of outsiders. Outsiders are only required to assist in election campaigns. Good example historically of a cadre party system would be the first party system in the United States. If you've read the material for this week, uh, the chapter on political parties, uh, or actually it was for last week, but the chapter on political parties, uh, you may remember that the authors of the textbook told you that uh, political parties emerged shortly after the ratification of the Constitution. Uh, the first party system featured competition between Federalists, the Federalist Party, and the Jeffersonian Republican Party. Um, they don't, I don't remember the authors of the textbook using this terminology, cadre party system, but it was really before the flourishing of, I mean, just before the flourishing of sort of mass participatory democracy in the United States. So that very early period, from the late 18th century, the late 1700s, to the first decade maybe the first decade and a half of the 1800s, where you had this competition between the Federalist Party and the Jeffersonian Republican And remember that the Jeffersonian Republican Party, we call it the Jeffersonian Republican Party to distinguish it from the modern Republican Party. It is not the modern Republican Party. Um, they were, uh, the Republicans of that era were uh, you know, intellectually, disciples, so to speak, of Thomas Jefferson. He was the leader of that political party in opposition to the Federalist Party. But it's actually the origins, really, of the modern Democratic Party. Uh, I don't remember if the authors of the textbook get into that issue, uh, really. Uh, Amy's nodding her head that they do. And I'll have a couple of things to say about that uh, additionally here in just a few minutes. But the point I'm just trying to make right now is that um, in the late... 1700s, early 1800s, very early 1800s, there really was no effort on the part of either the Federalist Party or the Jeffersonian Republican Party to reach out to sort of ordinary citizens and bring them into the political process. But that happened very quickly after the turn of the 18th century. By the time we get to the second decade, excuse me, the 19th century, by the time we get to the second decade of the 19th century, um, Jeffersonian Republican Party, which is now sort of fractured and become, there's got sort of this two-party competition between the now calling themselves the Democratic Republicans and the National Republicans, they, they begin to reach out to ordinary voters, which was a fairly limited segment of American society at the time. Uh, but nevertheless, it was the initial efforts on the part of political parties to bring ordinary voters into the political process. So uh, that's this type of political party that we're talking about, okay? The mass membership party system that unites hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of followers uh, in an attempt, uh, it attempts to base its appeal to the masses in the United States. The roots are as early as the so-called Jacksonian era. Maybe some of you remember learning about this period of American history uh, where, you know, historians and political scientists tell us that um, you really have the flourishing of democratic ideals during this period. Uh, certainly in the 20th century with the advent of the direct primary and other democratizing features of the political process, uh, the party system that we have in the United States today uh, is a mass membership party system. In fact, uh, that's really the uh, type of party system that we see in all democracies around the world mass membership party systems, okay? So that's the initial distinction that I think it's important for us to kind of appreciate if for only historical purposes um, this distinction between these two different types of party systems and what we have today are the mass membership uh, party systems. 
right? Now, the other dis another distinction I want to share with you, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the fact that we have a dominant two-party system in the United States. Um, but, um, you know, we, we talk about the Democratic Party and the Republican Party being the two dominant parties. I want to get into that a little bit, but initially before we do, I want to um, qualify that a little bit because I think this feature of the party system in the United States is important for us to understand. I, I think it's accurate. It's completely accurate. I think we're going to continue to use that characterization. The United States has a dominant two-party system. But I just want you to kind of you know, keep in the back of your mind, sort of as a footnote, maybe, in your mind, in your understanding, that we really don't have, in the strictest sense, a two-party system. Okay? We have a party system in the United States that mirrors the structure of the federal system. So if you remember back several weeks ago, uh, when we were talking about what federalism means, we said that it is a system of government where you have a national government and 50 state governments. And I told you that when you take your government 2306 course, you'll extend that by adding a third level of government, local governments. We have a federal system in the United States that has a central government, 50 state governments, and then literally tens of thousands of local governments, county, city, special purpose governments, etc. Right? We have that same kind of structure in the party system, in both the Democratic and Republican parties. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is there's not just one Democratic party and one Republican party. There's a national Democratic party and 50 state Democratic parties, and then literally tens of thousands of Democratic parties organized at the precinct level and the county level, or maybe the congressional district level, or state senatorial district level, the local level, right? And then the same sort of structure in the Republican Party. We have a national Republican Party, we have 50 state Republican parties, and then we have literally tens of thousands of local Republican parties organized at the precinct, county, etc. level. Okay? So I think that's important for us to understand because we have in our party system, uh, it's not uncommon to find conflicts uh, between the National Party, whether we're talking about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, it's not uncommon to find conflicts between the National Party and the state parties. Right? For example, in the middle part of the 20th century in the United States, during the Civil Rights Movement, we found that the National Democratic Party's agenda or its platform was far more progressive on issues of racial equality and civil rights than were the state Democratic Party platforms, particularly in the South. If you took a look, for example, at the Texas Democratic Party platform in the 1950s and the 1960s, or the Alabama Democratic Party's platform in the 1950s or the 1960s, or any of the southern states, really, on the issue of civil rights, you would probably not recognize it as the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party, the National Democratic Party, was far more progressive. And then I think the situation exists in the Republican Party to a large extent today, although it's kind of reversed. The National Republican Party today, its platform is far more conservative than a lot of state Republican parties. Not necessarily Texas, but in a number of states, the state Republican Party platform, maybe a place like Wisconsin or or uh, Minnesota or some place like that, I think we would find that the Republican Party platform is not nearly as conservative as the National Republican Party platform. So I'm just trying to alert you to the fact that we tend to think about the political parties as these monolithic organizations, right? And we're all Democrats walking lockstep with each other. And all Republicans walk in lockstep with each other. But there's really quite a bit of diversity of thinking among Democrats and Repub among Democrats on the one hand among themselves and among Republicans themselves. Uh, and it oftentimes historically has manifest in, in terms of the difference between the national party platform versus the state party platform.